Good day, students. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to master the trig chart. Uh, and also, I also want to help you to understand um, the connections between the uh, components of that trig chart. We are going to be going from 0 to 90 degrees, focusing on the common angles in the first quadrant. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the creation of a chart. Now, we we'll just draw two lines here. Um, we're going to be populating our rows and columns. Before we do that, let's indicate what's going where. Uh, we're going to have the angles um, on the on the on this upper row, so let's call them theta, and then the functions are going to be going down here. Okay. Now, before we start filling out our angles, our functions and the angles, there are some identities that you need to have in mind. Okay. So let's write them down. Identities. Uh, you have to remember your quotient identities. Um, you have to remember that sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tan theta. Okay? And then you also have to remember your reciprocal identities that 1 over sine theta is equal to cosecant theta. And you have to recall that um, 1 over cosine theta is equal to secant theta. Um, having these uh, identities in mind can really help you construct the table, okay? This other identity I'm about to show you, is a quotient identity, cosine theta over sine theta equals cotangent theta, is a good identity to know, but you do not need it for, for this table, okay? All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my rows for my trig functions, all six of them, the parent, quotient, and your reciprocal, so sine, cosine, uh, tangent, and then the reciprocal of sine, the reciprocal of uh, cosine, and the reciprocal of tan, whatever that is. And then we're going to have our angles, 0 degrees, um, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, um, 60 degrees, We'll go right here, get my ruler, 60 degrees, and then the last one will be for um, 90 degrees, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, fill in our functions. Okay, so our parent trick functions are sine and cosine. I like to start with sine, so we have sine theta and then cosine theta. Now the last, next one is tan. You have to remember that tan is a quotient of sine and cosine, all right? Now, what is the reciprocal of sine? The reciprocal of sine, 1 over sine is cosecant. So we have cosecant theta here. What is the reciprocal of cosine? It's secant. As indicated here, um, secant is 1 over cosine, all right? And the reciprocal of tan is cotangent. That's another uh, quotient identity. All right, let's put in the angles for the first quadrant, the common angles. We have, so we always start from zero. And then for the angles, you want to put in the degree and radian value, angular value. So the next one is going to be 30 degrees. 30 degrees in radian form is pi over 6. And then we have 45 degrees in radian form. That's pi over 4. 60 degrees in radian form is pi over 3, and then 90 degrees in radian form is pi over 2. Okay, so there goes your um, angular values that we're going to be finding in the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of. The row that is easiest that I like to memorize, that I normally have memorized, is the first row. The first row um, are basically the points that show up on your unit circle, the coordinate points or the continuum. So uh, if you start from zero, you're going to go from zero to one. And then these three cells have the fraction bar, and you have a two, a two, and a two in the denominator. And then the numerator, this whole thing is as simple as one, two, three. All right? Now, you have to read the numerators. The square root of 1 is 1, so no need for a square root there. You read this and read that. So there goes your first row for your trig chart. 
Now to get the cosine, um, all you simply do is reverse the order of your sine. Okay? So reverse the order, you're going to have 1 over 3 over 2. And for 45 degrees, we're 2 over 2. That's in the center, so it doesn't move around. And then 1 half, and finally 0. So that's that for the generation of the cosine row. Just simply reverse the order of your sine row. Now let's shift our attention to tan. Tan is cosine over cosine. Okay, so this, we're going to do our calculations on the side here. This is our scratch. So, um, for 10, the first one we're going to have is 0 over 1. 0 over 1 is just 0. That was easy, so 0 over 1 is 0. The next one we're going to have 1 half divided by 3 over 2. So, so how do we calculate this? How do we divide 1 half by 3 over 2? We'll multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator, 2 over 3. That yields um, this 2 just divide out, 1 over 3. But we cannot have a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize that. So 1 over 3, we'll multiply top and bottom by 3. And our final answer will be 3 over 3. Okay? So that's the value for tan 30 degrees or tan 5 over 6 from 3 over 3. And is a consequence of dividing uh, sine 30 degrees and cosine 30 degrees. For the 45 degree uh, column, we divide these two, which are identical. So if we do root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, you're just going to end up with 1. For the 60 degrees, we're going to divide again. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have root 3 over 2, the y value, divided by 1 over 2. To solve this, we just multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. The twos cancel out, and your final answer is square root of 3. Lastly, 1 over 0 is simply undefined. Okay, let's shift our attention to the cosecant piece. Remember our, our identity for cosecant? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So all we're going to do here is simply reciprocate all the sine values to get our cosecant values. So if I reciprocate 0, I end up with 0. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Reciprocal of roots 2 over 2, let's write that down. Roots 2 over 2 reciprocated is going to give us 2 over root 2, which needs to be simplified into 2 roots 2 over 2. These two twos divide out, and your final answer is root 2. Okay. All right, so let's put down our value for um, cosecant 45 degrees, 2. And then for this one, it's 3 over 2. If we want to do, we're still working with cosecant here. Cosecant. Now, if you want to do it's 3 over 2, to find the reciprocal, the same procedure as root 2 over 2, right? We Put it the denominator over the numerator. That's what the reciprocal is. But because of the negative, uh, the radical symbol in the denominator it needs to be rationalized. Root three over three, and then that becomes two root three over root three times root three is root nine, which is three. Okay, so we have two root three over three. How did we get this? by reciprocating the sine value. To get cosecant of 90 degrees of pi over 2, we just reciprocate 1, which is 1. Now to populate the remaining two rows, we don't have to do any work. We just re reverse the order of two other rows, and then we are done. Secant, to get secant, all we simply do is reverse the order of the cosecant. Remember the sine and the cosine? In order to get the cosine, we reverse the order of the sine function. So here, in order to get secant, we're going to reverse the order of the secant function. So that becomes 1, 2 root 3 over 3, root 2 still at the center, 2, and then 0. Now to get the cotangent row, 
I will simply do is reverse the order of your 10 row. Okay? So we have undefined, root 3, 1, root 3 over 3, and then 0. This is just one way to find the cotangent. There are other ways other than reversing. You can do cosine over sine, or you can reciprocate your tan values to get the same results. So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Um, please feel free to subscribe to our channel for more uh, cool clips such as this. And do give us a thumbs up if you like the presentation. We really appreciate it. And do post a comment or let us know what you think about the clip. More clips can be found on markgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.